Welcome to the Vet Med Wellness and Leadership Podcast, where we discuss central challenges vet med leaders face, such as burnout, stress, and difficult interactions with clients and staff, just to name a few. In each episode, you will hear about actionable solutions that you can apply to your practice and invitations to connect with fellow leaders who are passionate about improving the wellness of the vet med profession. By subscribing, liking, commenting, or sharing this podcast, you're helping more veterinary professionals find the resources shared in these episodes. Thank you in advance for listening and supporting this show. I hope you enjoy it. Hey, everybody, Crystal Stokes here, and I am with Dr. Jeff Werber, who is in his 39th year as a veterinarian, primarily working with small animals, cats and dogs. He also has an awesome radio show that you all could check out. It's on every Sunday at 9 a.m. It's also on Instagram Live. It's called Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff. And Dr. Jeff, I would love for you to tell us a little more about yourself and all these 39 years you've been in practice. Well, uh, uh, first of all, thanks for having me, Crystal. This is great. I love talking pets. Clearly. Um, and, uh, you know, I was one of the lucky ones that had a calling ever since I was little. And I'm talking five years old. And apparently, according to my fair parents anyway, because I don't remember back when I was five years old. But they remind me uh, that I talked about becoming a veterinarian ever since then. And so when I realized how lucky I am, because I talked to a lot of kids, I, I go back to my old high school for career day. And how many kids still in high school, in college, have no idea what they want to do. I've talked to kids in college. So what's your major? I'm majoring. What do you want to do? I said, I, I don't know. So now having been doing this for so long, I know how lucky I am. And not only that I knew what I wanted to do, but I still love it. I have classmates that are already thinking about retiring, already, already retired. And I'm thinking retiring, you have to pull me away, kicking and screaming. There's no way I want to stop this. So um, I, I feel pretty blessed. Oh, I know. I love your passion. I remember when we first met, that was just so obvious and it's contagious. And then when you meet people who've just, they're on this planet, they found exactly what they're here to do. There's just an enthusiasm for it. You, like you said, you can't pull them away from it. I think right. that's fabulous. And you know, today we've had a lot of conversations about the different challenges that we see in the veterinary profession. And a big one that we're going to be chatting about today are conflicts with the people, whether that that would be the people, the staff that we work with within the hospital or the clients that come in with their pet attached. So let's let's go ahead and start you know, rolling into this topic. What do you think is going on and how do you deal with this? Well, you know, first of all, I would tell you this, that most of the problems within a workplace stem around communication. And it's either poor communication. You know, I go back often when I, when I hear sometimes my front staff dealing with a problem, difficult client. And who, you know, by the way, we have to listen to our clients. We have to listen to each other. Because a lot of times what we are hearing is not necessarily what they are saying. Mm -hmm. And so for the one thing I talk about is something called active listening. And that is that if you think you heard something before you react, before you answer, repeat it back. So let me get this straight. So you're saying that you didn't like the way I get it. No, I, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that, you know, and, and so you realize that you're sometimes responding to a problem that wasn't even the problem. Ooh, so, so wait, let me, let me try. So that means right now, if it was happening, I'd say, okay, so Dr. Jeff, what I think I hear you saying is that a way to diffuse conflict is to start with active listening by repeating back what you He's heard them say. Correct. Correct. And that's, that's called active listening. So, so then at least you know that the problem you're about to deal with uh, is the, the real problem that, that was presented. Another thing, and this is going back, you know, I talked about my parents telling me when I was a kid, I, you know, that I wanted to be a veterinarian. How about this lesson that serves you in life? And that is, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Now, let's take our dogs, for example. I can say to my dog, oh, my God, Tommy, you are the dumbest dog on the planet. You are so stupid. It's unbelievable. And his tail is wagging like this. Or I can say, Tommy, you're all the best dog I've ever had. Right. And he'd be he's just shuddering. Right. So so it's the tone. It's it's how you present something. People don't want to be knocked down all the time. People want to be complimented. People want to be helped. So you try to make that same negative criticism, what we call constructive criticism, and you preface it by being constructive. I know you tried your best when it came to the way you handled that client, but let me let me share a couple things with you, okay? Now, 
Some other rules of thumb, never engage each other in front of other employees or in front of a client. Oh. So if you have a problem with one of your employees, one of your coworkers, pull them aside. Say, before you, later on, I just want a couple of, discuss you a couple of things with you. And it's embarrassing that what immediately, if you do it right then and there, even though you're so angered by what happened, you, you want to, um, it all, it's already denigrating them. They already are going to be on the defensive. Okay. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you present it personally, and not only that, it gives you a chance to calm down because again, your delivery, people aren't going to hear you. They're not going to listen when they hear that negative tone and you're all the anger. They, they wipe that out. All they hear is. Ah, 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 ah. Mm-hmm. So the whole idea is by, by waiting, it, it also helps you kind of and also maybe rethink it maybe come up come up the best way to deliver it and make sure that the goal is to repair this Mm -hmm. all right what's done is done you you can't you can't go backwards so now how do we prevent this from happening again okay let me slow you down i i love this so much so i want to break it down for people that are listening because sometimes this feels like magic we think okay how, why is it that this works so well? Cause it does, it works like magic. If you do what Dr. Jeff is telling you to do, you will have much better outcomes. But why is that? So the neurobiology behind this is really interesting. When we are angry or anxious or really afraid, the frontal cortex of our mind kind of goes offline. And that's the part that's logical and practical and can regulate our emotions and keep us calm that we call it flipping the lid. It just pops up. It's not working anymore. And a little limbic brain in the back, that fight or flight animalistic part is taking over. And it's like, I have to survive and defend myself or run away and hide or freeze and not do anything. So we don't want that limbic brain to be talking with somebody else's limbic brain. That's just a recipe for disaster. Nothing good's going to come. So what Dr. Jeff is proposing is that you take a step back, you get your pre, you get your lid back on, you calm yourself down and you think, what's my intention in this communication? And then how can I deliver it in a way t- with this person that might actually be effective instead of just releasing my anger and having that immediate cathartic moment that actually has a bad impact down the road? Correct. Beautifully said. And another thing, you know, when I want to take this also to clients because client interaction is so important. And again, rule of thumb, when you have an angry client, okay, the worst place to discuss or try to solve the problem is in a crowded reception room Hmm. for many reasons. They're not paying attention because there's all these other distractions and everybody else is hearing what's going on, which puts even more pressure on the staff member to do it right, whatever that means. Okay. So the first thing you do is when you can, you can tell there's a problem, say, you know, I I really want to help you here. So let let, let me, give me a second. I just want to take you, we'll we'll, we'll go sit down and we'll work this out. No problem. Be positive. uh, There's another, another saying I love. Think about this. What's more important to lose the battle, but win the war or win the battle, but lose the war. So, what, by that, I mean, we are a service business. Get that straight. No matter how good of a doctor you think you are, and you might be the best, but if you don't know how to provide the service and take care of your clients who are not, or then I, I, this is what I share with my employees also, guys, you might see my signature on that paycheck, but I'm not paying you. They're paying you. So you have to keep that in mind. I had a perfect example I'll share with everybody. Uh, a lady calls and, and, um, she was quoted for a grooming, $30, excuse me, $60. Okay, reasonable for our area. But that did not include a special clip that she wanted. So the instructions go back to our groomer. He doesn't know what's going on up front. He doesn't know what we said. He, he, all he sees is a grooming and a special clip, which he added $35. She comes to pick up and it's $95. And she's convinced that she was told $60. And there was a literally, I'm hearing a battle going on between my receptionist and this woman. And I'm thinking to myself, are you nuts over $35? You would not believe the Yelp review that came afterwards, which is going to cost the hospital way more than $35. Now, if it was me and I see how upset the client was, they say, I'm out, Mrs. Smith, not to worry. Obviously, there was a misunderstanding. You, you, you heard, and we didn't know that you wanted a, a basic or a special clip when you made the the appointment. So the secretary, the reception was right. It was $60, $60, but you wanted more. But I'll tell you what we're going to do this time. Because of the misunderstanding, of course, we want to keep you happy. 
We want to keep Bowser happy. It's on us. But in the future, realize, remember, that when you want something more than just your basic grooming, it's going to be more money depending on what exactly you want. All right? Is that good? Now, how much the skin is that off my back? 35 bucks? I mean, really? Mm -hmm. And there was a battle. There was an argument going on to the point where this lady left, and she's never going to come back. I mean, I, it just blows my mind. Yeah. We don't always have to be right. Sometimes being wrong is better than being right. Mm -hmm. let me lose this battle she won that battle but i'm going to win the war because she's going to kick my back she will spend that money again i'm not worried about it but now you see it's a loss it's a lost battle okay. and maybe maybe lose the war mm -hmm. so it's so important that when you're dealing with conflict to step back for a second let me get this straight. what do i want to accomplish from this interaction mm -hmm. with, whether it's with a client or coworker? what's my goal how is the best way to achieve that goal to prevent embarrassment, to keep everybody happy and smiling? You know, you know how there's, you can tell you did a good job. And I got to be really careful because it's, it's a podcast going out. I don't know what, but you can tell somebody to <laughs> go to hell, let's say. I would say it much worse, right? And they walk out thanking you. <laughs> you follow? Yeah. So, so when you know you did it right. If they're thanking you after you tell them to go someplace. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so, and that's the magic. That's the goal we should all be looking for because it's not worth the aggravation. Do you want to know why so many veterinarians are, are, are leaving the profession or worse yet, as we've talked about in the past, mm -hmm. right? Is it, it, don't, don't, don't sweat the little things. Mm -hmm. Just let it go. It's okay. Life's too short. Mm -hmm. And, and if you want to come back to work, you know, the next day and be happy and be smiling. So big deal. So what? The, the client left and, and you know, you got, you, you, she got an extra 35 bucks, even an extra 100 bucks. It's not worth it mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, all right, what's more important? If you keep sane, if you keep happy to the point where you want to go, you will make that money back tenfold. Yeah. But if you have a, a, a chip on your block, off the old block, right? Mm -hmm. And you're worried about that and you leave and you go home and you're peed off. Mm -hmm. What's the point? Yes. It's going to affect you tomorrow. All right. I got two questions for you. One would be, do you have advice for how to handle it in the moment when you really feel like you're just losing it emotionally? We've all been there. The stress is high. And we know in the back of our mind, we hear that little voice. It's like, don't do it. Don't yell at that person. Don't do it. But it, you know, it's, it's, it just happens either you did it and how to repair it. Or do you have strategies that really help you button your lip and calm down? How do you um, do that? Okay. Unfortunately, I'm a perfectionist. And when things, I'll tell you the, the, the thing that gets me two things, actually, that I can tell you where I have a tough time holding back. And sometimes I fail, And that is, if the animal, the patient is at risk mm -hmm. because of a stupid mistake, that drives me nuts. All right. Or the interaction I heard about $35 to a client where we're going to have an upset client. I could have predicted just listening to this guy was in the treatment room when, I, when it all went down that this, this client is not coming back and she is going to just bury us. Mm -hmm. so, so those really piss me off because my, the staff has to understand the importance of those people walking in the door every day. And if we don't value that relationship, and if that client doesn't feel that that relationship is being valued, mm -hmm. then we're toast. And the same thing with the employees. So when I've lost it, and, and I know I have, and I've had time to do after the fact that I should have done before the fact, and that is play it in my mind. How is the best way to approach it? I've already lost it, right? I've already exploded. I make sure the very next day or later on that day, I come, come and talk. I want to talk to you for a second. And I just say, I'm so sorry. My bad. I, I was very upset and I, I felt the, the patient was at risk, but, but I, I should not have done that. I should have certainly reacted the way I did and not that quickly in front of the other employees. So please forgive me. Uh -huh. And but in the future, we really have to do a better job making sure that we prevent that mistake again. And one thing I'll tell you, I said to this guy was a terrible, terrible mistake. I said, um, one thing we learn from our mistakes, I can almost guarantee that in your career, 
you will never make this mistake again. Mm -hmm. Because it had such an impact. Oh, yeah. That just happened to me recently. Uh, Much, much lower, um, I guess, level of responsibility. I was just playing tennis and my tennis coach is like, I'm volleying at the net. She said how to do it. And I just did it a little wrong. And that ball nicked off of my rack and hit me in the eye and gave me a black eye. And she's like, you're never going to do that again. And I was like, (laughs) I think you're right. That's right. (laughs) That is an effective way to learn when it hurts. Now, how do you go about, let's say I have my own practice. I'm a, I have a small animal clinic and it's, it's a, a small practice and I'm, I am the owner and veterinarian and I would like to help train my staff in having this mentality of how to engage with clients, especially the difficult ones. I mean, it's the, the, the nice, pleasant ones are, are, are super easy, but how to neutralize conflicts and the mindset to have around these, you know, more challenging clients that come in. Do you have any strategies for getting everybody on the team, technicians, assists, front desk staff, all, you know, other doctors that you bring onto your team? How do we get everybody, you know, practicing this together? Because I think a challenge that I see also is where, let's say reception will say, well, this is how it works. These are our fees and da, da, da. And the, the client may push back and then the doctor will come over top and say, actually, you know what? We can waive that. And then the receptionist feels sort of undermined of, well, I, I thought I was just doing what, I, what the procedures were and the, this is how much it costs. And now I don't know what to do in the future. Should I just give the discount? And a lot of um, you know, conflict can arise that way within the team of not being on the same page. And it's interesting you say that because I was thinking about the same thing um, and how they should have handled when we have it all depends on the degree of the problem, the nature of the problem. Um, You don't want to override your your receptionist by saying they did something wrong. So what I would do is they say, I have to tell you, Sally did it 100 percent right. That is our policy. And I can only treat, you know, teach them and I want them to follow through with our policies. You know, of course. That because of the miscommunication here, and it's usually going to be a problem of communication, um, that that I really feel badly. And of course, I value you as a client. I've been seeing you and Bowser for X amount of years. So so um, I'm I'm breaking the rule, and I don't want them to break the rule. So they they were right, but I'm allowed to break the rule because I'm the boss. All right, and then let them know. Sit, compliment your employee. That's when that you can do something in front of the employee. Because you just made them feel good. They're doing it exactly the way they're supposed to. We don't want them to to make that judgment call. That's got to come from the top, which is what I do teach them that when they're having a problem with a, a, a client, especially if it's a perennial problem, it comes back all the time. I don't want them to handle it. I want them to tell me about it. And on the rare instance, and I, I believe we talked about this once before, but I'll share it with our audience here, is that sometimes the best way to get that client to appreciate what we try to do for them is to fire them. And I have had situations where I've walked into a room and I can remember this one client particularly, and I walked in with a vanilla folder and I handed it to him, he goes, what's that? I said, I'll change his name for, for obvious reasons. Let's call him Roger. I said, Roger, look, we, you know, we've been seeing you for a long time. And it seems like you have so much conflict with the girls up front and it's happening all the time. And you get upset. Look, I'm here to make you happy. I'm here to make all my clients happy. And yet I can't imagine we're going to fail. And I think you're one of the failures and I don't want you to be unhappy. You need to go someplace where you are truly appreciated, where you are happy. You, you treat everybody nicely because they treat you nicely and it's just not happening. So here's your records. I also gave you a list of some other doctors in the area that you might be, you know, connect better with. Of course, the doctors that I can't stand and, and uh, <laughs> dirty, dirty Jeffrey. So anyway, and well, this, this one guy, he goes, he turned white. He goes, uh, uh, I, I don't want to leave the practice. I said, well, Roger, you, you give me reason not to. You, you don't, they're not happy. I said, look, if you came in and you, you greeted them nicely and they greet you nicely and you're, you're, if you have a problem, you wait, say, can I talk to Dr. Werber? And, and then I'm good. P.S. He did not leave the practice. He has been a gem for the last eight years. It's yeah. unbelievable. You know what that's called, Jeff? It's called boundaries. You know, when you set the boundary and you say this is unacceptable behavior, just like we do with our pets, you reinforce the boundary, then we know what's expected of us. And so often we just don't know where the limit is, where the line was drawn. This also reminds me of a story you had told me too. I loved it. It was about a a negative Yelp review and how you handle these. Please Uh talk about this because 
I, so many practice managers and hospital owners I speak to say, Yelp, oh, it's horrible. And we get these, these horrible posts on Yelp and it just destroys me. Like I, it gets, it, it hurts. It's very wounding. So how do you handle it when somebody posts something really scathing on Yelp? So, so we had um, a couple of things, but you know, first of all, I'm not a fan of Yelp. Um, so the, the very first negative Yelp review I got was a hundred percent. The client was right. And, and it was uh, just, I'll give you briefly. She came in for a prescription diet. Now, by the way, for all of us to know, prescription diet is not prescription. They call it that. If somebody wants to come in and buy a case of RD, sell them a darn case of RD. All right. But so, but they thought it was a prescription and in she, she writes, uh, but the, the, the short of it is the girls wouldn't sell it, it was KD. They wouldn't sell it to her because she wasn't a client. All right. And it, they thought it had to have a prescription. So your and front desk staff in, refused to sell it to her because they thought. To sell it. Okay. So in her Yelp review, she says, I came in, I, you're, you're actually closer to me than my regular vet. And I came in to get, I was, I ran out of the, the food. I wanted to, if you had it, they would not sell it to me. So I wrote her back uh, privately. And I said, first of all, I am so sorry you had this experience. Uh, you know, unfortunately, because the name prescription, the girls thought like anything in veterinary medicine, we have to have a patient-client relationship called the VCPR, and they couldn't sell you the diet. It turns out that it's just the name of that line is for prescription diet. We had it. We could have easily sold it to you. I'm so sorry. Um, because you mentioned that you are actually, we are actually closer to you. Please, if you ever need help again, you want to buy food, just come in. I will give you your first exam on the house. You know, just so we can establish an exam. So in the future, even if you need something, we have this relationship, VCPR. We can go ahead and take care of you. And I, once again, I really apologize. Now, I, if she really wanted to resolve, then she would have, at the very least, at the very least, sent me a note back saying, thank you, doc, but no thanks. I went out of my way. I told you, know, she's talking to the head guy. All right. But I got nothing, absolutely nothing. And I'm thinking to myself, she didn't want resolve. She wanted to complain. She wanted to moan. So I said, you know what? Screw that. And now I answer the, 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 uh, the bad reviews publicly. P.S. Um, I get a call from a new client, potential new client. And I said, so how'd you hear about us? He goes, well, from Yelp. I laugh at Yelp. I, do you need glasses? Are you reading those? You love glasses? <laughs> They're never good. And he says, I'm a dentist. And your response to that review was so classic. He said, I want to go to that guy. Oh, <laughs> so, I love this. So what do I try to do is I try to also, again, you don't want to, you don't want to match pissing match as they say, that's not good. That's this negative energy. You want to thank the person for the review because if you didn't write this and I didn't read it, I would not have known that this happened. And then I'm afraid that if it happened to you, it could be happening to some other clients. So again, thank you very much. And then I go in and, I, and explain it. And if I can remedy it, I can remedy it. And I just take, take the high road. It's not worth getting into an argument on Yelp. And I only had to do it once. And it was scathing and it was inappropriate by this woman. And, and um, the way, that's where I learned, which is why I hate Yelp. She called my associate a a B I T C H or, and, and so after responding and it was, if anything, she should have thanked us for what we did, but it was it, unbelievable situation. Any vet out there would say, Oh my God, I can't believe it. I can't believe you guys did what you did, which was so cool. All right. And that she complained and not only didn't thank us, she actually made it into a negative because we hurt her feelings. And, and I, I have to share it with you. She wanted to put a seven-year-old dog to sleep because she was she couldn't take care of it. And she didn't think that anybody would want to adopt it. It had a few minor problems. It was an old poodle. It really nothing, nothing major. So we, my young associate comes. He says, Jeff, I can't put this dog to sleep. We, we work with rescues. We can get a home. So we went back out. To, I said, look, I'll tell you what. You, we will charge you what we would have charged for euthanasia. All right, we are going to take the dog over and we will clean it up. We will fix what needs to be fixed and we will work with one of our rescues and we'll be able to replace place that dog in a new home. Mm -hmm. But we just don't want to put it to sleep and we don't want you to pay for anything more than you were ready to pay for anyway, which was just euthanasia. Okay, what a deal. She 
basically wrote to my about my associate how what she was a bitch that she made her feel you know miserable because she wanted and she did it all i was in the room with her we were trying to help her and you know feel feel for her and take care of it the way we wanted to without making her feel badly so she was guilty and she blasted so at the very end of my review i said so oh by the way i mentioned her by name she mentioned my associate by name all right and i Obviously, I could see who she was. So I said, okay, and I'm not going to mention her name. And I said, so who's the bitch now? Okay, I was so pissed. Anyway, P.S. I get it back from Yelp. I get a note. You can't use her, her real names. Oh, she can call my associate by name. And she called my associate a B-I-T-C-H. And I couldn't call her a B-I-T-C-H. Is there a little double standard going on here? So I had to write, I just put her first name and her last initial, and I choose a B asterisk, asterisk TCH now. Oh, God. These are the wars that take place. So I, I, oh my God. What I, Jeff, what I appreciate about you, you're so authentic and you just, you show up fully. And I know that other veterinarians listening to this are just, they're so going to resonate with this. You know, we have a lot of, um, lingo going around with like compassion fatigue and burnout and all these things. And you can see how, how much energy this requires, these types of exchanges. And fortunately, Jeff is one of those guys that has a lot of energy. He is just like an energizer bunny. And I think you have that robust constitution that you handle these things that you can, you know, face the conflict. You can be assertive. You can learn from it. You can recover from it. You know how to put things in a bucket of like, you know what? That didn't go well. I learned from it and I'm moving on. And you know, that you have these strategies within yourself that helps you remain buoyant. And I really hope that people listening to this today can s extract some of these tips that you've given on how to deal with conflict with difficult clients on Yelp all the way to your staff in your hospital. Well, you know, the key really is, as you said, you know, I, I, I am so far from burnout. I mean, I'm in my 39th year and I, my, you know, they'll put me away kicking and screaming. There's no way I want to stop doing this. And um, people say, you know, you don't like, you don't play golf. I go, yeah, I play golf every day at my office, meaning this is my golf. Yeah. I get the same enjoyment out of doing what I do as if you were on the golf course playing golf. And, um, you know, they talk about work-life balance. I'm not sure I know what that means. I pulled out my random house from 1968. It didn't even have that in there. Can you imagine? I could not find anything about work-life balance. What does that mean? So, but, you know, it's, it, to me, you know, when my kids were younger, yes, I, I did. And this is way before computers. So I had to actually go back in the office. I would come home, help with dinner, help with homework. And then I would go back to the office at nine o'clock at night till 11, 1130. And, and, but it built, I, I, I joke, I built my mini empire that way. And I have my clients, literally many, many, many of them for 35 years or more. And, and so I'm doing something right. And that's the joy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it took me four years to get into vet school. I was a dummy. I was partying way too much at Berkeley in the early 70s. And, and uh, I think with my first application, the, the admissions committee was still laughing for a year, at least until my second one. Like, this guy wants to go to vet school. Are you joking? So, um, so, but I hung in there and I persevered. And I really wanted to be a surgeon. I, unfortunately, I do a lot of surgery. But I, because it took me so long, by the time I got into vet school, I was married. I had my, my first kid was on the way. It's like, uh, my wife would have killed me if I went to do a four-year residency now. So I became a GP, which I, by the way, the best thing that ever happened to me was becoming a GP. Because I get to do all the things I do. I do a lot of, I, more than normal ocular stuff, more than most veterinarians would do. And I do tons of soft tissue surgery. And I, I love it. And I do my derm. I do everything I can. And I have my, my bank of referral doctors for the various specialties. But what I love the most are those long relationships that I have with my patients and my clients. Mm -hmm. And I've been invited to more weddings and more holiday parties than anybody I know. I mean, I'm sitting there and we're going around the table. So how do you know the couple, the happy couple? Are, are you relative? I go, no, they're veterinarian. Yeah. Was your doctor there? No. Was your dentist there? No. But they invite their veterinarian. <laughs> to me, that's the magic. And, I feel uh, so the same. Going. Yep. I can say the same thing about my work. I think we have the same enthusiasm and passion for it. It's so rewarding. Uh, w w with all this longevity you've had in your career, to bring this to a close, do you have any regular routines or practices that you do that really help maintain this fabulous energy and attitude that you have? 
No, just knowing that I'm going to have so much fun today. Uh, you know, I, I get to work and and um, I, I think I, I posted I had this cute. Oh, my God. I do a lot of French bulldogs. I do a lot of the nasal, the nary surgery and the soft palate surgery because I use laser, which is the best. Anyway, um, so I, I, I'm sitting there. And I'm saying, I say, you know why I love to come to work every day? And I pick up the goal, the puppy. This is why I love to work every day. <laughs> I get more tongue than anybody I know. Um, you know, it's great. It's great that when when I'm, when I walk into an exam room and I'm if I'm if I'm wearing a white coat, I usually don't. Um, I'm just you know polo and a, st and a stethoscope around my neck. But sometimes I wear a coat or a, and and I've got the stethoscope and there's a little kid in the in the um, uh, in the waiting room in the, I mean, the reception or the or the exam room with her mom or his mom and they see me and they start to cry mm -hmm. and that tells me god my dogs my patients will run over to me jump up big paws on my shoulders giving me major licks in the face that's the difference between us and pediatricians our patients should love us and when they do and you get that love and that affection and the client is giving you kudos and kudos and praise why would you want to stop that mm -hmm. is there anything better could you get that anywhere else you probably couldn't get it at home anymore after many years of marriage right and you get it every day yeah. And um, that's what keeps me going. Oh, and so with others listening, what I really enjoy doing with people that I work with is really discovering what lights them up because we're, you know, we're all unique snowflakes. What lights some people up wouldn't light others up. I know some people that don't understand animals, don't get why people like them so much. It's just whoo, over their head. I know other people that love spreadsheets and data and it just gets them excited to like be online and to go through these numbers and whoo, it energizes them. So figuring out what that thing is, it really lights you up. And then I noticed for you, uh, the, I'd highlight this for others to practice is there is a real sense of gratitude. Like every time I've talked to you, every single time you have had some story about something you're grateful for. And it's just a, a natural way of how your mind is wired. But I think we have plenty of evidence now that supports that practice of receiving gratitude, letting it in, feeling it deeply. That is extremely beneficial to preventing depression, to giving us energy, to helping us feel safe. So that could be one that anybody could practice as a takeaway for today. Absolutely. Well, um, you know, I, as I said, it's it's just uh, I don't sweat the little things. Uh, fix what's, what's broken. Don't fix what's not broken, and and make sure you fix it the right way. And uh, and again, but like you said, I I feel so blessed. Um, you know, I, the, the the holiday cards. It's the little things that people just really just love coming in, love seeing me, love having me as their vet, and I get this every single day. I'll get some amazing client who's just so, oh my God, Dr. Roy, thank you so much. You saved my pet's life. I mean, it's, it's, it's great. And that's, that's what keeps me going. Oh, I love it. So Dr. Jeff, if people want to connect with you, find out more about you, listen to your radio show, what are some of the best ways for them to find you? Well, my radio show is on, is on Pet Life Radio. It's an internet radio station. Uh, you can go to petliferadio.com. If you click to shows, scroll down to Ask the Vet with Dr. Jeff. We also have a live Zoom link there so people can join live on the show. Um, and otherwise, I'm also on my Instagram live. So if you follow me on Instagram at Werbs, that's my nickname, underscore DVM, uh, or just put Dr. Jeff Werber, you'll, you'll find me. And, um, and then you can join me live on Instagram. And um, you can always direct email me to drjeff.jeff at drjeff.com. One of the easiest emails on the planet for a guy called Dr. Jeff. Dr. Jeff at drjeff.com. And, uh, and um, you know, it, it, and by the way, it was out there that has, and I've had a lot of guests before, veterinarians that have something that is unique, something special, something they're involved in that you want to talk about on my radio show, please call me and be a guest on my show. And Crystal, you're going to be a guest on my show. So, uh, <laughs> so um, anyway, no, it's it's uh, really important because we want to, uh, my show is very pet parent friendly. My that's my target mostly your pet parents, and they can join on. They can ask questions about their pet. But um, as veterinarians, um, I know you had a nice chat with with my our, my colleague Dr. Heather Lenzer, and Heather's great. She's been on my show. Um, uh, Lap of Love founder Danny McVitie has been on my show. So you know I have I love having veterinarians join me on the show, mm -hmm. and we can talk about anything they want to talk about. Oh, oh, that's such a great invitation. And it's a wonderful show to listen to. Just, I, I love that callers call in with whatever they're dealing with in the moment and you give them really practical, realistic advice. Uh, so, you know, for those people that are listening to that have a pet, you might find some interesting episodes on there that would help you with your pet. Absolutely.
Well, Dr. Jeff, thank you so much for being on with me today. It's been such a blast. <laughs> thank you for having me. And anytime you want to pick a subject, as you can see, I love to talk. Oh, you'll be back. <laughs> Take care. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that you feel stoked after listening to this episode. And as always, I would love to hear your comments and feedback. Is there a topic that you want to know more about? Please let me know. And thank you again for subscribing and sharing your favorite episodes with others. It really means a lot.